Now let's go and look at the real use case of how can parameter context be of use? Why can't we just use variables? Well, let's go ahead and demonstrate that. I have a, I have a processing group here that is called uh, PG1. And in this processing group, what we're gonna do, we're gonna list some files in a folder, we're gonna fetch them, and then we're gonna put them into another folder. So in our example here, we can see that we are listing the directories that come from the input directory value. So before we do that, we can see here that he's giving, a, he's complaining, hey, it's invalid because property referenced one or more parameters, but no parameter context is currently set for this processing group. So if we go here and we look, that is correct, no parameter context. So let's go from the drop down and assign this. Apply. Okay. Now you see um, it's validating. Basically, he recognizes that a new parameter context was added to this process group and he's trying to make the reference to it. So right now we have them in valid state. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to list everything from this input directory and we're going to write it to this output directory. Now, if you want to see what's the value of this particular parameter context, one way you can do it, you can follow this particular uh, arrow here. This will take you straight into the parameter context uh, window and we'll highlight the parameter that it's trying to use. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Before I go ahead and show you guys what, how this actually work in action, let me show you what we have on the operational system. Let's go to that, to that location that we have set in, our, in my parameter context value, right? So input directory, let's navigate to it. And directory and do LLSS. So we see we have three files here. But let me go back one level, actually, let me go one level below and do a tree command on data demos. Right. And now let me explain what I'm trying to do here. In our first scenario, uh, we basically we're going to move from this read folder into this put folder. And then we want to do the same action for these other folders here. But we're not going to change the processing group. We're going to change the parameter context values. And this will reflect and affect this particular folders. Now, let's go back to our uh, flow file. Let's start this process. Uh, this list file, we can see that he listed those three files that we do have in, in our folder. Now, let's fetch them, basically, and put them in the other folder. So if we would um, run this command and go back to the terminal line and we do another tree, man, we can see that uh, the put was populated with the incoming data from the read folder. Right, now let's switch to PG2. Normally, if you would be not using um, uh, parameter context, you would stop everything here and you will change the property to point to the folder um, that you want to read from. But in our case, so you would pretty much change this value here. But in our case, what we're going to do Assuming that this is an, uh, a new uh, processing group. So let's say you have a colleague that wants to do the same action, but he doesn't want to um, recreate the entire flow because you already have a template there. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a new um, parameter context with this PG2 values. So let's go ahead and do that. One way to do it would be to go through the UI and create a parameter context like I showed you guys before. But we're not gonna go, we're not gonna do that. I'm going to use the command line in this case. We're gonna go and log in to, not, to our NiFi toolkit. If you ha guys haven't installed NiFi toolkit, make sure you do so by following one of my previous tutorials. I'll put the link in the description. So now let's jump into our NiFi toolkit in client. Here, we have the NiFi import parameter context command. If we're going to do a NiFi import uh, parameter context and write help, this will provide us with all the information required uh, for us to import a parameter context from JSON formatted file. So let's go ahead and do that. I already have the command ready here. Uh, it's a reference to my GitHub repository, which I'll uh, have it uh, available for everybody when the, this tutorial will be published. Basically, we have a parameter to, underscore, uh, to JSON, 
Uh, it's the exact replica of the first parameter, but it carries different values in this case. So let's run this command. This command will connect to this NiFi instance and he will create a new parameter context. We can see that we had a valid response. Now, if you navigate back to NiFi, go to our burger menu, parameter context, we see we have a second parameter context and this is two. Uh, and we can see that the values are changed. Now he's pointing to PG2 red and PG2 put. Let's close this one. And what I'll do here for the sake of this tutorial, I'll create a copy of this processing group. So let's go ahead and copy and paste it in. Cool. Let's rename this to PG2. Change the parameter context to parameter context demo2, which is the parameter context that we just imported. And apply. Let's run this flow. Let's let's actually start them all. All right, so the, the it's all completed. Now, if you look inside, we haven't changed nothing in the flow. We basically clone the flow uh, using a copy and paste, and then we just associated the new parameter context. Now, going to my terminal, let's exit this uh, um, toolkit and let's clear it so I can make it cleaner. We are in OPT. If we're gonna do a tree on my data demos. We can see now there are uh, PG2 put, it's also populated. So this is gonna demonstrate the power of the parameter context and how can we benefit out of them.